Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the Second Mile Fellowship here today. We are in Genesis chapters 27 and 28. A lot of good stuff, man. I really enjoyed today's reading and God really showed me something that I want to give you some of, but maybe not uh, the entirety of it. Uh, so let, let's just go ahead and get into it here. Uh, Genesis chapter 27, I have that divided down into four sections, the first being the first five verses, and I have that titled, Esau sent for venison. And uh, chapter 27 tells a, a, a very famous story about the deception that uh, Jacob and Rebekah perpetrated upon Isaac to steal the blessing that um, Isaac had intended to give to Esau. Now, in uh, verse number five, we see something, and I think it's verse number five, if I, yeah. Verse number five says, And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son. And we see, I, I think, in that wording right there, a little bit of the favoritism popping up that we have, have seen and will see uh, throughout here. Uh, Rebekah favored Jacob, Isaac favored Esau, and, es and Isaac desired to give unto Esau the blessing that flows from Abraham through Isaac and uh, his intention anyway was to circumvent God and uh, his plan uh, of, of the blessing going through Jacob because if you look back in chapter 25 that's what uh, uh, God had said he told that unto uh, Rebekah that uh, the blessing was going to through the elder would serve the younger all right, so we see that first five verses, six through 29, is uh, Rebecca and Jacob's deception. And uh, as, as they do this, just a few things to note here uh, as they begin to deceive Isaac. Um, Jacob's in the middle of it. He went along with it, but it was really his mother's idea. And as he's in there, he's worried that he's going to bring down a curse on him instead of a blessing. Verse number 20, and Isaac said unto him, as uh, Isaac is questioning this, because it don't seem right. And uh, we see Jacob using the Lord as part of the deception, and that's really just kind of low down. Verse number 20, and Isaac said unto his son, how is it that thou hast brought it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord thy God uh, brought it unto me. This is the same deception that we saw in our Wednesday night study of Simeon and Levi, how they used circumcision to deceive the uh, town there as they slew uh, the man in the town that they were in that uh, had uh, slept with his sister, treated her as a harlot. And, uh, you know, it's just multiple times. And, and the thing that constantly comes to mind when I see this is the televangelism, right? And those people that use God as a ploy to get what they want. Jacob is guilty of that here. Simeon and Levi was guilty of that in chapter 34 as we move forward in the book of Genesis. And then uh, the thing that really just really blew my mind as I'm reading this was the fact of how Isaac's flesh had failed him. And, and, and it's very specific as it goes down through here in this interaction that Isaac is having with Jacob. You see that his eyes were dimmed, his ears could not discern, his nose was deceived, his taste found difficulty. And I, that was amazing because, you know, I can pretty much tell my wife's cooking from anybody else's, but here his 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 wife and his son's cooking were so similar, it deceived him. Uh, he found difficulty in that. His hands were disappointed when his hands felt upon Jacob as he was dressed as, uh, as his brother. And so Isaac's flesh failed him and ours were... Ours will fail us too if we rely on that as Isaac did his. He did not use wisdom. He did not use discernment. He used his flesh to try to figure out this situation. And as you see, it failed him. Verses 30 through uh, 40, I have that titled Esau returns, weeps, but is blessed. And you really can't help but feel bad about Esau. E Esau was a carnal man. He was a, uh, he was a, he was a very carnal man, but, um, Man, I just, when I read this, especially verse number 34, uh, and before, well, before we get that, look at verse number 33. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly. Do you know why Isaac trembled very exceedingly? Not because he'd given away the blessing, but because he was trying to circumvent God. God had already declared 
from those boys in their mother's womb that the elder would serve the younger. And so they knew that the blessing was going to flow through Jacob. But because Esau was Isaac's favorite, he tried to essentially force that blessing. And as you, if you go through the blessing, he is bestowing the blessing of Abraham onto what he thought was Esau, but in truth it was Jacob. And here when Isaac realizes this, he's trembling exceedingly. Why? Because he was trying to outsmart God, and uh, he knew that God was having none of it, so he allowed this to take place. And uh, then, again, he's just crying. We see that in verse number 34, talking about Esau. He cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. And then as you go down through there, he's weeping. Uh, verse number 38, um, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lift up his voice and wept. I just... My heart breaks really for Esau in this passage of Scripture because he was really, he, he did a very dumb thing when he traded out his birthright for a pot, of, a pot of porridge. But here he was beguiled. He was being the dutiful son in order to receive this blessing, and it was taken out from under him. And uh, I don't know, just it, it bothers me. But uh, anyway, God used it to good. He used it to good. Isaac continues to bless, and he does bless Esau, even though he cannot bestow upon him the blessing through Abraham, uh, Abraham's blessing. And uh, then lastly, verses 41 through 46, Esau's threatens uh, to kill Jacob, and uh, plans are made for Jacob to leave. In chapter 28, I have that divided into three sections. The first is the first five verses, and I have that titled, Isaac blesses Jacob and then sends uh, sends him away. Isaac now, if you read through here as he as he as he's blessing Jacob once again, he is invoking the name of Abraham, verse number four, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that uh, thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Isaac is now resigned to the truth that he was trying to deny earlier that the blessings of Abraham was going to flow through uh, his unfavored son, Rebekah's favored son, that is, of Jacob. Uh, and in verses 6 through 9, I have that titled, Esau Tries to Please His Parents, because verses 6 through 9, now, if you, if you remember back in chapter 26, at the end of there, verse number 35, 34 and 35, Esau was 40 years old. He took uh, uh, two wives unto him. And it says in verse number 35 that the, it was a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So when Esau looks and he sees that his parents are not pleased with his wives, the, the Canaanite wives, and that they're sending Jacob to find kinfolk wives, well, what does Esau do? He tries to please his parents in taking brides that weren't Canaanites, but they were Ishmaelites to, to wife. And so... Esau's real problem here was twofold. Number one, he did not seek counsel prior to getting married. He did not go to his parents and say, what do you recommend? What, what would do that would be pleasing in your sight? Because he knew that his daddy was a godly man. Not without faults, right? But he was a godly man. He did not go to them for godly counsel. He took what pleased him, and that's what he did. And then after the fact... Now he's trying to fix it, and but he didn't even go back to them again. He just said, hey, maybe this is a good idea, and he goes and takes Ishmaelites for, for wife. So he tries to please, but then, of course, that doesn't. Verses 10 through 22 is another very famous passage, and that's passage of Jacob's Ladder, and that's what I have it titled. That will take us through the end of this chapter. And um, we see another illustration of Jesus in verse number 12, he dreamed, behold, a ladder set up on earth. And this is essentially a bridge between man and God. And that's what Jesus invoked of himself uh, in, in throughout Scripture. I didn't put that in my notes, but you can uh, surely you can look that up and find it. Another illustration of Jesus. And in verse number 18, we see a pillow to a pillar. Uh, when he woke up, he took the stone that was his pillow, and he made a pillar, an altar unto God, poured oil upon it. And this is something I believe that Christians must do and we must do now, and that is we need to wake up 
and uh, build uh, an altar unto God and dedicate ourselves unto God. Wake, awake from out of our sleep. Our country is in dire need of it. Our families are in need of it. Our children are certainly in need of it. Christians must wake up. And then lastly here, um, verse number 22, we see another instance of the tithe prior to the law. Abraham did that to Melchizedek. Now Jacob is uh, dedicating that tenth unto God. Melchizedek, of course, being the priest of the Most High God. And so the tithe was something that was instituted prior to the giving of the law, and that's the one thing that I wanted to uh, make sure and point out there. It's, it's very uh, uh, important to understand that a tithe is something that predates the law. So for Christians that say, well, I don't need to tithe today because we're not under the law. Well, the tithe was something that God had set up prior to the law. And in fact, no, we don't need to tithe now. We need to do something better because the tithe was ordained under the blood of bulls and goats. We are under the blood of Jesus Christ. How much more precious is that? All right, so anyway, that's uh, more than you might have bargained for for this lesson, but that's what we have for today. I hope it's been a help and blessing unto you. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.